and I will obtain your consent to record and use this audio. All right, we're jamming. Rebecca Boatman, welcome to the podcast. Yo, happy to be here. Um, we were just talking about, uh, can I ask you about your dad, actually? Because I have follow-up questions. Would that be okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I, I was, feel like I'm already going to laugh a lot in this interview? I, I this is great. Wait, you, you said something just like one minute ago, and I, I had like follow-up questions, and I bit my tongue, and I was trying to be like polite. But actually, now that it's on the record, um, may I ask you about your your dad is is putting out a book about UFOs, and you you just said something like he's explaining how to connect with them and call them in. Yeah. And so maybe you could take this wherever you'd like. But it sounds like you come from a, a very open family with a strong spiritual lens. Uh, Anything to sh share about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so and you can ask any questions as I as I share. But he, so the book that he is launching or that's already launched that we're doing a big party for in Sedona is called UFO to IFO, and so it's identified two identified objects to really shift people's perception of them and the relationship to them. And um, he teaches you how to call them in, like how to communicate with them and um, how we are connected to them and the spiritual component behind it all. And it's really fascinating and special. And I have tons of videos of him communicating, like saying flash at me or respond to me and they'll respond to him. And it's also, you know, it's like a he has like, he's so devoted to it. Right. So when you're so devoted to it, you're, you're strengthening your connection. Um, and the back, you know, with your question around the background, he, he, in his early twenties studied at an ash, uh, ashram. That's not like the fish. That's not what they call it, but it's what people know what ashrams are in the South of France called um, Le, Le Bonfin and with a master Omran Mikhail Ivanhoff, who is a master of the great white brotherhood, which St. Germain's also from the Great White Brotherhood, if you're familiar with St. Germain. Um, and yeah, it, it, in his early 20s, and the, it's in, that was when he had his very first encounter. So they focus a lot on spirituality. And then the byproduct is that those be, these beings are, they're able to visit because your frequency is high enough. So um, yeah, and then he had his first experience there. And, um, you know, it's a totally different, I went and visited this place. It's like a totally different lifestyle. And it was really fascinating. I went and saw the place like two years ago, obviously the masters passed away and whatnot, but yeah, then my dad came to America and coming from, can you imagine coming from a center like this, where you're just like meditating, singing purification, like it's a completely different world. And they came to America and he was like, I literally, He's like, he, he's like, I know the truth. So he was trying to connect with people. And he was like, I couldn't, I couldn't connect with anyone. He felt so alone and then swung into girls and cars and, and partying and just like literally like let go of the, like it went hard into that lifestyle. Met my mom, accidentally had me, <laughs> you know, and, um, and then years um, and then not that long ago, he was hit by, a, um, he was on his motorcycle Easter weekend. Um, and a drunk driver going 90 miles an hour hit him in the back of the motorcycle. And he basically, you know, was e e ejected and flew in the air and rolled and um, survived. But every, it was one of those situations where people like, there's no, you shouldn't have survived that. You know, you were hit on a motorcycle going 90 miles an hour by a drunk driver that clipped him in the back. And that was a big wake up call for him of like, I'm so off my path, you know? So he was not practicing at all for a very long time. And now he's back into the um, spiritual aspect. And a big focus of, of is him wanting to teach people how we are connected to these, to, to these ETs and um, how they support us, how they're here. And so that's just been a huge focus of his. And it's been really neat to support him in that journey as well. Yeah, that's fascinating. Like my, my dad was a, a tire salesman. It's like, uh, it just seems like a different world. Yeah. Uh, you know, not that my dad hasn't had adventures and all of that, but it sounds like, like, how do you think that has influenced your upbringing or y who you are today? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, so my dad didn't actually talk to me about any of this until the last like 
five years. Like he, cause like I said, he, I didn't even know really about the UFO experiences until the last, yeah, like five years ago. And, and when I went and, and visited the place, um, the, the ashram and I would ask about the UFOs. They don't say anything. They just like wink at you. It's so like <laughs> versus my dad's over here, you know, which is so cool. <laughs> you know, he's cheering and, and uh, or sharing and teaching people. But I would say like, I mean, my dad has such a big heart and I'm, sh and he's so like, everyone loves him. Like everyone loves, loves my dad. And you feel so good when you're with him and when you leave. So I would say, um, that that definitely influenced me. And then, yeah, also the openness most likely, um, to, to, to all of these things of not being dogmatic and, and not, um, not having to break through some of that conditioning that I, I watched some people go through and I'm like, wow, I, I can imagine how challenging that, that may or may, may be. So yeah, just openness and also understanding and, it's pretty freaking cool. I will say, I'm like, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Have your dad, dad, who's like super into this stuff and everyone loves it. But it sounds like you, you're very open-hearted that you are open-minded. Um, and that you, I mean, you're obviously very likable, right. And you're very outgoing. Um, but so the work that you do, maybe we should introduce you now since we've spent five minutes talking about your pops, but Who's Rebecca Bowman for those that are listening that are like, yeah, she's got a cool dad who does quirky shit, but um, how do you describe yourself? Who are you? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. I feel like it always changes, you know? Like, yeah, there's there's me and my right now living in Austin and I love lifting and I love outdoors and I love what my work I you know my zone of genius is out in the world challenges and supporting people and breaking through old identities into these new identities and at my own events at other people's events and then it's like it's also the not knowing or the not being anyone or anything right it's like the true freedom so I'm like that's my answer is is to that question um but I I love I love supporting people and and really um basically disturbing any energy or anything that would is um holding ho holding them hostage and may may it whether it's like a lack of confidence or a lack of intimacy or a lack of, uh, of aliveness, anything that will support them and coming alive, coming alive, whether that's deeper intimacy or whether that's um, taking up space, that's something that I do know I just, I thoroughly enjoy doing. Yeah. I, like, I haven't heard that phrase, like energetically holding you hostage, yeah. but it seems very accurate and visceral, right? Yeah. Um, so how did you get into this work? How did you, like, what's your path? Oh, I love this. Okay. I mean, it's so funny. I was thinking about this story this morning and the, you answered, the, you asked that question. I'm like, oh, wow. That's me. I was thinking about that this morning. So I got into this work and where our specialty is the out in the world challenges, meaning say you come to me, Jeremy, and you, I would ask a bunch of questions and say, okay, this is where we could disturb and let's move, let's shake this up for him because this is going to open up so much. And I would design something that you would do in the real world to move to disturb that energy and, and move it so it liberates and frees up energy for you and allows you to access more of your being and i got in, in into this because through several you know different modalities that i've experienced there was one that just landed and made the biggest difference for me and it was these um, that where you take an action step and you do it in real time and you have to move through. And in that moment, you have to become someone new. And so my experience was they, I was, they told me, okay, Rebecca, you're going to, you're going to go to a, um, restaurant and you're going to go with your invisible boyfriend. Okay. So this is like something I had to do. <laughs> They're like, you're going to go with your invisible boyfriend and you're going to take, go out to eat. And then he doesn't like his food. So you have to send it back. Okay. You have to send his food back because he doesn't like it. So and you then, ordered a meal for the invisible boyfriend as well. Yes. Okay. So, so then you're going to do, do it again. He doesn't send it back once, right? He sends it back twice. <laughs> and then, you know, and then not only that, but he's going to propose to you. <laughs> he, 
he's gonna propose to you <laughs> i'm like you got to be i'm like okay but you also have to be kidding me right like and so i got to do that <laughs> and mind you i'm like i told my friends we had a partner i'm like listen we're driving to denny's out of town like i don't want to i don't want to see any of my friends who are going way out of town right because it was so terrified i'm like i'm gonna look like a crazy person like all my fears of judgments were like coming up right i'm like i'm look crazy like so we drive and i don't know why i picked denny's because on a sunday it was like the worst idea ever there's like a huge it's packed it's so packed and i and i was with my friend and i said listen you're gonna go and ask before me and sit somewhere else and i want if i'm doing this i want you to record me i, I need this content right and she was like oh no I, oh no <laughs> she was more embarrassed than i was i'm like no one's gonna know you're with me and you're not even doing it anyways so so i ended up going in and i remember in the middle of it i was like all my fears were just amplified like everything that was already showing up in my life was like in front of my face so strong right and i'm like looking and i'm you know I'm saying like, oh, isn't it called him Todd? I'm pretty sure I don't really remember what name I gave him. And the the there was a family sitting next to me, and the family, they were literally like the, trying to hide their kids from me. They were like the mom and dad were like sitting in front, like moving their bodies so their kids wouldn't see me. And I'm sitting there like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And then I had to send the food back again. I think I made something up about the eggs. I'm like giving him a straw and his water. I'm just like fully in it. And the waitress was enrolled completely. She's like, does he need anything else? Like, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to, <laughs> like, it was so hilarious. And then, yeah, he got down and proposed to me and I was like, yes. And I was just fully in it. Like just this new level of energy that had to come over me. Like I had to like allow something and like I had to access something new that I had never accessed before in order to complete this challenge. And when I was running out of Denny's after he proposed to me, I was just yelling, I just got engaged to the point where people who didn't see that there wasn't actually a person because the posts were too high. They were like, congratulations, like all oh, Denny's was con congratulating me. And after that, I just, it, it, what's crazy is when you do something like that and what happened in that moment is a whole new world of possibility opens up because you literally have to become someone different and i and this is where our mind doesn't fully understand it and won't comprehend it before or after or sorry before but after you you just see and i i had felt this aliveness also the adrenaline right but i felt this aliveness of like wow i if i could do that i could literally anything else is cakewalk and then from that at the from that moment at the time i was working at a startup company and I was running the ambassador program and it was only doing 5,000 a month in literally two months. I grew it to $30,000 a month, just post that experience. And there, you know, I dating started, like I started going on dates. Like before that, it was like, I had to take a shot of vodka before I went on a date. I was so nervous, you know, like it bled over into so many different areas of, of my life. And as I, you know, then I got deep into the relationship work and dating work and studying all that. And that in particular just made the biggest difference for me and and so we offer it in all all of our experiences and i do it at other people's events as well i love that yeah todd the invisible man i like when i asked the question i didn't anticipate that you would have been engaged in a denny's to an invisible <laughs> entity that's pretty cool <laughs> so funny i'll never forget it but i, I think it is like it highlights a very important thing, which is that there is a somatic, like experiential thing that lands in your body yeah. when you do something courageous or brave or vulnerable. And that is very different to listening to a podcast or reading a book about being brave and courageous and vulnerable. Like it is one thing to, to know it and another to like have it land in your bones. Right. Um, and I, I've, I feel like it relates to things in the past it, um, that I've experienced at scale. So for example, heartbreak, or um, like I, I did this really long walk in Spain once, and there was this version of me before that event happened, and there's a version after, right? And you are changed, you are different, like life affects you. And it sounds like what you're promoting here is that is like micro versions of that, or little challenges or dares or activities that heavily influence the body and how you perceive yourself. Is that fair? 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, and I agree with you, like we can read about it all day long. We can teach about, like people can listen and, but what they're going to remember is the experience. So when they can experience it and then their, their body actually like, yeah, their body has to go through the process, then it's integrated and then they forever have that gift. And that's also, um, yeah, it, it's, it's so powerful. And the ego can be, what I found is the ego can be so crafty. Like, let's read the next book. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like to, to avoid moving through any resistance that would allow for an upgrade. Um, but there's so much freedom when you do, it's always worth it. Totally. Like I've met people and they're like, oh, I've, I've gone to 16 Tony Robbins events. And, and I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, he's failed you. Like it is not working. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you have to go to 16 events. Like you, you're not taking on the medicine, right? Like something isn't landing in you. Yeah. Um, so when you get hired out to come to a space to cultivate an experience, what, what is an example of what that might look like? I, I assume it's not invisible uh, engagement proposals or maybe it is like, <laughs> no. Um, so you, I think you found me through fit for service or Aubrey Marcus, maybe that. No, did I, I didn't tell you how I found you. How? Like, so I, I was on a podcast and I can't remember the name. I was on a podcast and then it published and I checked it out on the Apple thing. And then two episodes below my episode was my friend Aaron Sky Kelly. And so I was like, oh, Aaron was on this too. Like, that's fun. And I, and I screen captured it and I sent it to Aaron and I was like, oh, hey, podcast pal. Like, that's pretty cool. And I made a joke to her about like, this Rebecca Boatman chick has no idea how lucky she is to be sandwiched in such greatness. Or it was something like that. Uh, just something silly and playful. And then we were like having a back and forth. And then I was like, actually, who is Rebecca Boatman? Like, and so I just like in Instagrammed you. And then again, sent it to Aaron and was like, actually, Rebecca Boatman seems pretty cool. Like, I think, <laughs> I think we'd be pals with her. Like, I think she'd be on our team. And so like, maybe this is a really awesome, like triple decker sandwich or whatever. And, and then I just reached out and was like, Hey, do you want to be on my podcast? That is amazing. Whose podcast was it that you guys were on? I can't remember now. And that's so sort of embarrassing, but. Um... <laughs> You're gonna have to go look at the text thread later. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. But it was, I don't know. I think it's just a fun story for people listening that there, yeah. I often feel like there's this, uh, this idea that it's super professional and formal and that there's a lot of vetting involved. And it was like, no, nah, just like random chick that we made a joke about and, uh, and she seemed cool. So I wanted to talk to her. So yeah. That's how I found you. And then when you, yeah, you told me about the sandwich and then I go, I literally thought sandwich in my mind. Like I was thought about you were eating a sandwich when you yeah. memoed me to go on here. Yeah. So that's how I found you. Um, yeah. And so then I was just like, yeah, she seems cool. She's in relationships. Uh, I watched a couple of your videos on Instagram and like, liked your vibe. I was like, yeah, her energy is good. I feel like she'd be a good fit. Um, but yeah, so now you, you work with Aubrey Marcus, you work with others. You yeah. come in, you're like a hired energy shaker upper. Yeah. I like that term. I didn't put that in my bio, but um, yeah. So I thought I said that because I recently facilitated at fit for service and, um, and I actually just got asked yesterday to do, I don't know if you know, to do Aaron Dowdy's event coming up here in, in May. And he's, he's amazing. He's in like the manifestation space. Um, and what basically what it looks like is I will quiz you. So it, at our events, we customize them because I'm able to customize them um, at bigger scale events. I have a quiz that everyone takes. And it's so it's it's awesome because what the quiz does it, is it identifies um, what category you kind of I don't want to say, categorize anyone, but where where you tend to fall into. Right. There's better words. So just <laughs> work with me. Um, so if, for example, there's more so a fear of taking up space or there's a fear of vulnerability or that, you know, we'll figure out what that is for you. And then I give a list of challenges and I also put you into teams, which is fun. I love teams. This is like a game of fire. I'm like, let's just make this as fun as possible. And, um, and so you'll go, you get inside teams and then you have a list of challenges that I'm going to give you and you will do as a team, you guys will complete that list of challenges. 
Um, and for example, at the event we just did, there's also a giveaway. We gave away, or Aubrey gave away $2,000 to the winning team. Um, and one, what the winner who won the um, challenge was, you had to go and propose to a piece of fruit in the middle of a grocery store. Yes, I do get some that are different, similar to mine, but different. And the winner was proposing to um, a banana and he just did like the best job ever. I need to post it on my story and share it. And it was so good. Um, so of course for him that helped move through, um, maybe any fears of needing to look good or, you know, anything. And then what happens from there is when approaching women and it, it, it's like cakewalk, it's so much easier, right? Because you've moved through, um, any sort of fears because my, our belief is if we can expand your threshold this big, which I'm putting my arms out for those of you that can't see, then anything else is a lot um, easier, which you, you find in that. And then, yeah, so that's what it looks like in terms of facilitating at other people's events and, and shaking things up and allowing them to access parts of themselves that are already there, but maybe they're, they, just, they just haven't tapped into it yet. It, it sounds like exposure therapy in some sense of like, You've mm -hmm. taken the quiz and you're like, yeah. oh, you're, you're scared of snakes. Well, here's a box for you to carry around for an hour. You're like, yeah. I can tell you what's in it. But um, I like that idea of identifying the discomfort zones or the limiting beliefs and then targeting them in a fun way that forces you to actually do something rather than just think about it is what yeah. it sounds like. And the, it's, I've, I haven't heard that described before. It, it seems like it would be like a fun emotional thing because everybody is kind of at their edge and at their out of their comfort zone just like oh god I have to go propose to a banana right now and maybe somebody else has to do something completely different and everybody's a little bit on edge yes in a supportive container yeah definitely it, it's interesting and what I always support people with and what I'll share here now is it gives you an opportunity to really like look at your nervous system too and like how you respond some people get really tired right because they, that's their way of shutting down to, to resist or they all of a sudden they want to go eat you know a whole jar of peanut butter or it's just really cool because it's also when you're you can look at the way you, you you usually exit attempt to exit something but once you move through it it's like this burst of energy comes through you and what's cool is I also do this with my friends for fun because I love it so much you notice like all of a sudden you're like this ball of energy this ball of energy that's rolling around we did it in Sedona not too long ago rolling around and people are just drawn and staring and like what because you're you are you're you're cultivating um a lot of energy in, in that process too yeah and and in that space you're fully alive right? Yeah. You're like fully present. You're feeling all the feelings. You're immersed in a community. It's like proper aliveness. Mm -hmm. I like that. I want to see some videos of that. Yeah. So you have to post those. Oh yeah. We have a highlight of my Instagram. Anyone can go watch. It's called, um, what's it called? Brave Experience, I think, or, or um, yeah, Brave Challenge, Brave Experience. There's a couple different ones. People doing. I, I saw a woman, uh, pretending to be a cat in a grocery store is that the one <laughs> yeah that that one that's definitely one of them <laughs> yeah that one's under with friends yeah yeah like. um okay so you do that but i know you're also um i don't want to say a relationship expert how, how would you define the work that you do or the specific areas that you um that you discuss with clients and whatnot because i know you work with people yeah. with primarily with women right to assist and support relationships love intimacy etc yeah yeah so um i've supported and support people in relationship um and then also then i started really focusing on supporting people single who are looking to attract a quality partner partners a partner that's great for them and that's what i'm really good at and we so primarily like our focus is supporting women and attracting their dream man. And we also have opportunities that support women in relationship, which we've done before. And um, also men tend to always visit our, our world as well. And, and just because my content, the way I talk is like to women, but it always works for men too. And, and they love it, which is really cool. Do you like, does it feel exciting for you to talk about that stuff or would you prefer yeah. to talk about something different? Okay. Cause I, I don't know, sometimes people are like, they have the generic answers and they're tired of it and it's all they ever do. Yeah. But 
Okay, so is there somebody listening right now that their eyebrows were raised and they're intrigued like okay how do i find a dream man like yeah. or dream partner what's the like where do you begin so to speak or what's yeah. the what's the vision right like where do yeah. you where do you yeah. start where do i yeah how do, where do i start so the big thing that i always like to say or like to now impress upon people from the get go is that every soul has their own unique path to attracting their dream partner and or their soulmate and so there's when we give um steps they're general guidelines right so i don't want people to ever feel like i have to do this to then get that because then it's taking the magic out and we don't ever want to do that right we don't ever want to do that so number one it's going to be it's it's going to the step is going to be really it's so obvious right when i say it knowing what it is that you really want like what's important to you in relationship, right? Like what's your dream relationship like? And I always say, you know, feel into what do you want it to feel like and come up with those three specific feelings. Is it fun? Is it safe? Is it adored? Is it playful? Is it adventurous? Like look at what those three things are and, and what that's important to you, why that's important to you. And it doesn't mean um, and when I say know what you want, also it's important, I want to put a little side note here, is that as you date, you're, you're also going to get more familiar with what is important to you through the dating process. So, you know, allow yourself to be consistently curious and, and also flexible because you may think something's important to you and then the reality is it's not and vice versa. So um, giving yourself that permission to consistent, continuously question and ask what is really important to me and, and to be in, in, in the not knowing as well. So identifying those three things and looking at, so say it's fun, safe, and adored. I'm just going to use that as an example. And then spend at least 15 minutes on the, this, where you look at, and you're, you look at, okay, when's the last time I felt fun, right? Like, what was I doing? Who was I with? When's the last time I felt safe? What was I doing? Who was I with? And when's the last time I felt adored? Like, and really just taking a moment to, to list things out and write what the environment was like, and just going back to that, those time, that time space and, and looking at that. And then, um, you'll, you'll have an idea of like, wow, I felt this during X, Y, and Z. And then the next step being, okay, how can I implement this on into my life every single day? So, it, it, so what I'm sharing with you right now is really giving people the basic yet strong foundation to ensuring that they're dating from a very empowered place of my life is so like you want to date from the space of like, I wouldn't want to change a thing about my life. Like I love my life so much, but there's nothing that I would change. So you're so at peace and you feel that wholeness. And then from, from that space, you're dating the empowered way, not from, you know, a space of lack or is he out there? Like all those things that can come up can be dissolved through having this solid foundation. Right. And it eliminates, well, it minimizes perhaps is a better word, minimizes like the neediness, right. And this, the external source of safety, fun, adorn, whatever adoring noun is adornment, ado adoration, <laughs> Make it up. fun, safety, and adoration, right? And so what I'm hearing is uh, you should love your life, love yourself, date yourself, get to a place where you feel genuinely fulfilled, happy, etc., And then you can go out from that space and be like, yo, like I'm the prize. Like I'm good. I don't need you. Like mm -hmm. you need to want me. Is that is that the vibe sort of? The, the as long like as, it. as long as the, I don't need you isn't coming from the, the <laughs> independent woman who's afraid of letting a man into her life, because I see that a lot too. Mm -hmm. So now you're going out and you're flirting. I always say sprinkling your magic dust, you're winking, you're, you're showing that you're available, right? You're like, Hey, you're, 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 you're putting yourself on the market. You're casting a wide net as you're flirting and trusting that the right person will court you know ask you out and will court you so um a big gap that's so funny too because at our events when I if I were to say okay ladies you're gonna go smile and wink at a guy for three seconds they literally act like I told them you you have to go kill someone <laughs> and I let you guys you know so it like cracks me up but um that one thing of having your body language be open right and your facial expressions and you're and actually flirting will shift and does shift so much for people in, in their love life. So that's the other step that's really important because 
fear of rejection is a very real thing for men. And I like to talk about that part as well. Go on. You want me to elaborate? <laughs> like, so, yeah, like what's the, what do you got to say about it? Um, one of my friends who is a Navy SEAL, he, his, um, one of his, the guys on his was a pollute platoon. Am I butchering it? How do you say the, okay. Platoon. I'm sorry if I messed that up. Did I? You're good. Okay. You're doing great. Uh, um, he is, he's like this very, like one of the best seals on the team, super attractive, like great guy. And you know, when they jump out of helicopters and they do all these crazy stuff and they measure their heart rate and they, you know, that I, the goal is for them to stay neutral or in a, in a healthy space and be able to handle, you know, stay calm under pressure. So one time the guys were all sitting around and they joked with him and they were like, Hey, you should call this girl. You like call this girl. You like, and they measured his heart rate and they were like, it was through the roof. He was so unbelievably nervous. You know, he, this handsome, incredible guy. And, and it was so nervous, so afraid to call her. And I just love sharing that story to remind people that fear of rejections is a very real thing. So if you have a resting B face, right. Or you're not showing that you're warm, friendly and open and available, you're most likely, that's why you're not getting asked out, you know? So allowing yourself to let men know that you are interested in them and men for women, right? Really like being willing to say that or show that you're interested. And, um, and also with that lingering in the space, say you see someone you're attracted to, showing them that you're attracted to them and then also lingering in the space for them to approach you and ask you out. Um, and or vice versa, you can go give them your number and say, hey, I would love to go out with you. Here's my number. That's also very feminine. You're saying, I would love for women listening who are like, I want them. Some women are like, but I want him to ask me. I was like, okay, he still can. You're just saying you would like to by saying, I would love to go out with you, you know? <laughs> um, like planting the seed, right? Like, you know, it would be great. Some Mexican food tonight. You're just like, and then you wait. It's like, do you want <laughs> to go get some burritos tonight? Oh, amazing. That would be wonderful, right? So you're kind of opening the door is what I, is what I hear. Yeah. 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 Letting the, letting the, you know, the individual know, like you're, you're interested. That will definitely, that's definitely an important step in the um, dating process. What, what about people who, because they're scared of rejection, refuse to claim or admit what they really desire in life? So, and so I'm thinking of somebody that might, you're like, no, I don't need him. I don't need a man. I'm happy. When in reality, they really do want that thing. They're just yeah. terrified to put the stake in the ground because what if they don't get that thing? I think that that's, I love that you address that. And it's so um, normal, I would say, or, or natural, like normal, normal is a judgment. So I want to use the word normal. I would say natural, right? Because our human tendency is to protect, right? We're, we're human. Like we want to protect ourselves and there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, and so, and actually the majority of people do experience that, you know, and, and so I love that you brought that up and it's, it's going to take, um, accepting and surrendering to your desire, and then, and then the next step would be owning it, right? And so being willing to, to, to surrender to it. And then also, if you have a hard time doing that, then I would say, look at the cost. Like if you choose to stay behind the fear and not, and, and stay in the, I don't need, and, and the not owning and not surrendering this desire, look at the cost of what's that going to be like for you five down or five years, 10 years down the road because it's going to take you starting to your desire and you owning it and then you being open to it for it to manifest or for it to come in, into the physical in your life. So if, if you have struggled getting to that, really honestly sit with the pain of what's it going to be like if 10 years from now you don't do that? Like how old are you going to be? What's life going to be like? And sit with sit with the pain of that because then it's when we really sit with the cost it's like okay let's make some moves <laughs> you know let's make some moves I'm willing to surrender even though it's scary as shit buckets and I just want to poop myself no I'm just joking and I'm just like don't know what to do with my like ha like you're scared that's okay so um and know that you're also not alone in that that's very common yeah I like that you brought in the temporal element because it often seems like it boils down to just that. So short term, it's working out fine. It buys me another day, another hour, another yeah. week. I'm good. But then when you look at long term, and this relates to any kind of ambitious dream, not necessarily just relationships. It's like, 
oh, 10 years, uh, you haven't asked for a raise. Like you're still getting paid the same like because mm -hmm. you were scared to ask or you didn't start writing your book 10 years ago or you, you know, and now you're old and you're and you're dying and it's like, damn, where did my life go? Uh, anyway, that's a random uh, tangent that I will not take down the rabbit hole. But um, I have another question. Yeah. How do you how do you distinguish between being independent and being unavailable or avoidant? Mm -hmm. Like you alluded to this line that you see in women, particularly. Yeah. Do you have anything to share about that? Absolutely. Um, so unavailable, I would say, let's use, let's use unavailable as invincible, right? So the woman who is successful and um, she has this attitude of, I don't need a man. When the reality is that's true. Like no, we know, everyone listens to, you, you, you know, women, you don't need a man. You want one, right? There's a difference. Now, but if, when there's this undercurrent of like, I don't need you and there's this like pushing away. It's like, I'm in, if there's a attitude of I'm invincible, that's actually armor because there's usually under that, there's this fear of, I'm afraid to show you my humanness. I'm afraid to show you my vulnerability. I'm afraid to show you my, my soft underbelly because maybe it wasn't safe growing up. Maybe you're always told don't cry or you're, and you, you, you built this idea that you have to have it all together and letting someone in can feel terrifying. Um, but so I know it's worth it. Okay. So <laughs> that way I would say that's the invincible, you know, it's like this attitude of I'm invincible, which men, anyone is intimidated by that. And it, because when sometimes women are like, well, men are intimidated by success. It's like men actually are not intimidated by success. They're not intimidated by your bank account or your job. They're in, anyone is intimidated by a persona of invincibility because it's not real. It's not, there's no way to, you can't really connect to that. So there's, so it's repelling, right? Cause we all want to connect on a, on a genuine connection level. But if we act like we're, a, you know if we act like we're not human and that doesn't exist it's just, you, you, you can't build it from that space with someone um, especially if there's no room for intimacy in that. And then independence, right? Is, is the healthy, I'm, I'm independent and I understand that I would like to um, have you in my life as a partner to do and enjoy life with and to go on this roller coaster, right? Life's a beautiful roller coaster. Um, and I, I want this person on, on the ride with me. Um, but if you're not on the ride with me, my roller coaster, like I'm still in the car, like I'm still okay. I'm still going to keep moving, right? So there's a whole different, you know, we can talk about different facets of that. But yeah, to answer your question, I like seeing like the unavailable as the invincible, you know, being invincible and then that actually being protection, air quotes protection. Yeah, I, I like the descriptions armor and, and repellent. It, it seems like there's an energetic intention underneath each of those that are very different, yeah. right? Like one, it, one there's an openness, there's, an, there's a, a willingness to be met, to have contact. And then the other is sort of like a fierce arm's length um, fear, I suppose, or a lack of safety that comes across in, in requiring that armor, right? And I think it's important to highlight too, just off the top of my head, that sometimes based on life experiences and where you are in life, uh, armor is a perfectly reasonable boundary to have. Like if you are healing, if you are going through some heartache, if you are just at a phase in life where you're like, no, nah, it's a no, then invincibility is a reasonable, healthy choice at times. I think the problem perhaps arises when you keep that armor on after the wounds have healed and you're actually good and ready for another engagement, but you've become so used to the armor that it feels, um, feels difficult to let it go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I hear it as like a healthy sense of self, like healthy boundaries, healthy um, yeah, allowing yourself to have, um, to not engage or to, um, in certain dynamics or scenarios that wouldn't support your healing that is necessary. So I hear what you're saying. Right. Um, what is a question that you get so often that you want to just shake the whole planet and be like, God, I'm tired of talking about this. I wish everybody could, everybody could download this into their 
spleens and just live it in their bloodstream like is there a question that comes up regularly that drives you cuckoo it's usually it's usually a problem in the form of a question that i get countless like hundreds of dms it's i like this guy and now he is either talking to his ex again or i'm not hearing from him or he it's it's always it's always i'm talking to this guy who is not showing up for me that i see all like all that i get those questions all the time in many different forms and um and to basically it's the challenge of um it what's happening is they're attracting a partner usually that mirrors a trauma bond mirrors or there's a mirrors how mom or dad didn't show up or mirrors like what they're used to in terms of emotional availability and and consistency and nervous system and all these different things so with that i would um it's like i want people to understand you really want to step back and, and look at there's so much power to looking at patterns like you can even create a list of your last three partners or two partners and looking at um you know the challenges and, and then looking at okay how does this relate to what my childhood was like and just really starting to understand um how and why you would cho choose the people the way you do and then moving into this place of choosing to date by from vision right understanding that in order to have the relationship that you want um and desire it takes becoming available for that so yeah Dan, it, it's usually that where pe women are attracting partners and they're dissatisfied and then they're constantly saying that and repeating it in that because they're not taking stepping back and looking at the the bigger picture to allow for those shifts to happen so they you know falling for men that same man different face right and then same emotional experience underneath that which is what they equate with love or a relationship is that fair yeah like one that i often got until i wrote a very snarky post about it was like i keep dating assholes like or there's only assholes in my town or men are assholes uh and then i just was like well stop dating assholes like stop sleeping with assholes stop making out with so assholes. Good. Stop, stop taking assholes back stop giving assholes a second chance and like we need to teach the assholes that uh it's not working any longer right and so the idea of claiming like claiming what you desire which i think is what you were just speaking to like claiming what you desire owning it and taking action from that place which is also very uncomfortable. Um, do you do you get that question a lot as to uh, like I know what I'm supposed to do and I know what I'm supposed to say and I've heard you give me advice, Rebecca Boatman, but it just feels hard or it feels scary. <laughs> like what do you what do you say to those? Individuals? I mean, I would say okay, like you know, come back to you when you're committed to a different story. Or you're committed to something new and different you know because it's the it's it we will oh have God. free will at the end of the day you know and so i i probably wouldn't honestly entertain it too much or or i'd say when you're ready for something different then do something different you know i think holding people high in that will you know everyone's you know powerful and you know seeing them as that what's um what is an area in your own life right now that feels expansive or like an edge or the the version of proposing to a carrot or whatever it was like is there something that you're leaning into that feels like icky or uncomfortable oh i love this question i should it's so funny because actually yesterday i was like man i should journal at that because i had that it's like i had that um thought yesterday i'm like man everything is so good and flowy and easy you know like can it is it then i'm like okay now i'm kind of bored i got a boredom moment yesterday <laughs> right and i'm like am i just like can i just relax or what's going on here um but for yeah i would say I mean, maybe that's it like maybe that's it it's just like yeah ease ease might feel like an edge or like admitting that everything's good and that not needing to have an edge can also be an edge um, yeah you know yeah i think it's can i think it's also because the way i run my life and, and business is very feminine i would say it's very trusting and working with the divine and i'm always like this is the angel's business like it's not even not my business and that's a lot for you know so many beautiful things to just like take its own life and um and i think it's deepening the faith in that because i'll watch myself like 
fruit, like allow for that beautiful opportunity to come through. And then I'll kind of get out of that space where my old self wants to come in and be like, wait, now let's make it hard. <laughs> right. So I think, um, yeah, you're, you're right about allowing, okay, can be just easy. Let me just relax and, and know that everything's fine. Cause sometimes that's kind of scary, you know, so strengthening that most definitely. And also, working with Joe Dispenza is like imagine something that I would love to do because he does challenges at his events and but they're very different they're they're not like this and I always say mine are better because they're custom and so they can support the individual versus his are broad in general because it's really not it's a huge part of it because he knows the power of it but they're very it's very basic the way I see it so sorry Joe if you hear this <laughs> you know but so that would definitely be an edge and is a vision of mine yeah I would be shocked if Joe Dispenza was a fan of the podcast, but <laughs> you never know put that out there. You never know. <laughs> right. Maybe his daughter's listening is like, that's my dad. You're talking about, but no. Um, will you speak a little bit more about uh, that's the angels business or how you view business and life from that context? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I have so many sticky notes on my mirror. That I wish I could take you guys and then show them, show them to you, but that are similar to that. Um, where, yeah, I, it's what I've, it's like I've found the most I'm of service and the, that, that it's then giving to, to so many people. And then it's also giving to, to me so, so much as when I empty and I don't do this every day, but I try to. And, and actually, I don't want to say I try to, because if I did try to do it every day, I would be doing it every day. But um, my ego gets in and likes to like go to the old programs, right? But when I do empty myself every day and I'm just like, like universe pass through me, like pass through me. And I, I want to create from that, that space and allow whatever I'm, however I'm supposed to be of service here to, to manifest in a way that, that serves the collective. That's like, ultimate freedom like it gives me the chills even thinking about it it's like ultimate freedom and I believe everyone wants that you know and um so by saying that's the angel's business it really helps the, me detach and versus thinking it's me thinking it's Rebecca thinking it's it's um you know some my little self that has create you know it's like ha, is doing this when I envision and feel like this is like the angel's work that I'm just a, a vessel for it to pass through because what we're doing is we're allowing people to break chains off that would, you know, I keep their hearts closed when our heart is like, to me, the biggest portal. And, um, and there's so much, um, I would say peace and, and love in, in that space that when people operate from, from that. So a lot of what our, our work does is allows people to, to, um, travel in, into that space. So yeah, I always say this is the angel's business and it supports me to, to, you know, also get my ego out of the way and, um, and allow for that to flow through. And, and when I do do that, there's so many beautiful things that come that are then just come into my lap, like left and right all the time. And when I don't do that is when it, it, it's challenging and then I don't have ideas and I feel stuck and you know what I mean? I'm like, blocked. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, so just having those indicators helps a lot. Yeah. Sounds like trust practice or surrender practice, right? Recognizing that like there's some greater thing at play that we can't control and just sort of like opening up to it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rebecca Boatman, where can people find you on the internet or in real life if they want to inquire about knowledge acquisition or experiential weirdness oh, your experiential weirdness um so I have the Instagram which is where you found me um which is Rebecca Boatman I give a lot of content to inspire your dating life and and support you in that and then we also just launched something really cool and exciting that it's called love notes from spirit so you text this number which I'll give it to you it's 737-221-2123 um, and I'll, and you text the word love and then you opt into getting love notes from spirit to inspire your dating life, to inspire you to keeping your heart open, to allowing yourself to have an extraordinary love life. Um, so that's something that it was, I it was inspired from, I don't know if you've heard 
I think it's something from the universe. They do it and it's from the universe and it's general. It's like, oh, we need this for dating and love. So we created that. And then about our events, it's jointhebravemovement.com is where you can find anything about our online courses and our events. And where, you know, for the first time I'm launching VIP days, which I'm really excited because I haven't actually done private coaching or coaching, you know, for for, uh, like a year and a half. I've just been focused on in-person stuff, which is my jam. So I'm really excited to offer that as well and you can dink around and have fun on the site and <laughs> um but definitely and if you have specific questions from this interview you can dm me on instagram as well i've gotten a lot better at getting back getting going through my dms <laughs> not always so no promises but i would love to hear from you when you said that i was like uh oh she's she's opened the floodgates to the dm swamp uh <laughs> but just to clarify 737-221-2123 yeah and you okay. text love text love and i will put that in the show notes if you're listening right now and you're like you can't sort it out just check the show notes it'll be there um awesome thanks so much for being you and uh and just being real in all the work you're doing in the world it's uh it's fun and it's inspiring and i think it's it's the medicine that a lot of people need so i appreciate your time and energy and being here absolutely thank you for having me jeremy yeah no worries <laughs>